Welcome back to The Rock. It's something you're going to be hearing for uh, the entire week as we come to you live from the Results Operations Center for the IEC. And people are slowly starting to come in, but I think mostly people are still setting up and getting things ready for uh, the polls on Wednesday. Because Wednesday, of course, is when uh, the whole of South Africa goes out. We've just got segments of South Africa going out to cast their votes on this uh, two days. These two days are on Monday and Tuesday. Those, of course, are the special elections that are taking place for people that have already applied. But now, you heard a bit before the break, some of the analysts trying to put their you know, finger on the pulse of what's going on and trying to predict results. But let's get a little bit more scientific with regard to predicting results. Obviously, it's elections. It's a, it's a very complicated exercise. And there are a few organizations who actually do this. Now, for example, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, or the CSIR, is one of them. And they use data collected to predict results. But how accurate are they? And that's what we're going to get to the bottom of. Joining us here uh, in our SABC studio at The Rock, uh, Dr. Ndomiso Tlingo. He's a strategic partnership manager at CSIR. And we've also got with us Professor Pravesh Deba, who is a statistician with the CSIR. Gentlemen, good to have you. Welcome to our set here at The Rock. Okay. Thank you for having us. So we talked to these, um, these results and the predictions that do come out. CSIR, you've been working together with the SABC for a couple of years. In fact, I think you started working with us from the 2004 elections. Talk to us about how you predict. How do your systems work? Okay, so we provide uh, data um, predictions to the, CSI, to the SABC that those predictions are based on early results that come in and are counted and declared by the IEC. So we use about 5 to 10% of the results to project and predict what the out ultimate outcome is likely to be. Yeah. So, so you start from 5 to 10% of the votes collected. Correct. That's when your systems go in and you can start making your predictions. Correct. I mean, we, uh, we start with any results that we get, but the model begins to stabilize at about 5 to 10%. Yeah. And once it's stabilized, quite often it stays at the same level um, right up until the end. That's your model, not the average person's model because a lot of people start looking at these boards behind us and they start seeing you know one party suddenly mm -hmm. getting major results and they're looking so great but they don't realize that that's only due to a specific voting district that's uh, being counted and added to the results because there are you know there's so many voting districts around the country i mean there are th thousands of them so you know you need to be very careful at home trying to predict it is systems like yours that are able to predict it but how how does it work okay so um we use results from the previous election, previous national election, and in this case it's the 2014 national election. And we take the results from there and we study the voting patterns of various voting districts from around the country. There's about so it's close to 23,000 voting districts. Yeah. We study the, uh, the, each of those voting districts uh, voting patterns and we create um, clusters um, of what um, these voting patterns are. And it turns out that um, about uh, 20 clusters are sufficient for us to fully, you know, describe accurately um, what, you know, the South African spread of uh, voting clusters uh, ought to be. Okay. And we use that, those clusters now. We, we cast away the old results and we just remain with the clusters. Okay, of voting districts. Yeah. Once early results come in of voting districts, you can imagine voting district one belonging to cluster one out of 2,000 clusters in a one cluster, uh, voting districts in one cluster. Once those results come in, we take them and we use them to project or in, give an indication of when the change in sentiment has happened. Let's say one party has gone down by 20%. That means the rest of the cluster is likely also to go down okay. by 20%. And therefore we project the results to that cluster and therefore give a, an outcome of what it's likely to be. Professor, how reliable is your computing model? I mean, because we always talk to the phrase a margin of error, but how big is that margin of error? Um, I can only speak about the error uh, in terms of uh, the previous elections that we have done. 
So if we look at uh, the last uh, three national elections from uh, 2004, um, uh, as Ndemiso uh, um, uh, indicated, we are looking at uh, the model being able to uh, stabilize at, at around 5% of uh, the votes being in. So if we look at when 5% of the votes being, uh, being uh, in, um, in 2004, uh, we were able to uh, almost accurately predict the, the final outcome for the ANC. Uh, our error was 0.1% wow. for the ANC, whereas uh, for the other two big parties, which was uh, the DA and the IFP, the error of margin was between 1% to 2%. Yeah. In 2009, uh, the model did extremely well. Um, for the top um, uh, four uh, parties, which was the ANC, the IFP, um, uh, uh, DA and COPE, uh, the model was able to predict um, accurately uh, to within 1% for all four parties. So this is, uh, I mean, in, your in, margin in is fact, very close. In fact, uh, for DA, it was the highest at 0.7%. Okay. Um, now, on the day, <clears throat> um, you working with the SABC, do we constantly show these results, your predictions? I mean, are we speaking to them, saying that the CSIR are predicting, and how soon do we start sort of speaking to predictions. I know you can calculate from 5%, but when do we start sort of saying, well, the CSIR are predicting that the ANC are going to get and the DA are going to get and the EFF, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, technically speaking, from the first uh, um, voting district that comes in, we can do a prediction, but obviously that prediction is unreliable. Yes, okay. Um, and it, uh, the model is not stable at that stage. So it is only um, around uh, when we receive about 5% of, of the votes that the model uh, has enough data to become more stable and that is when it is more ideal to communicate. Uh, this happens around about uh, 4 or 5 o'clock uh, in the, the next day after the elections. 4 so 5 o'clock in the morning? In the morning. In so the morning. in the morning. So Correct. when we go on air mm -hmm. on Thursday morning, say mm -hmm. let's just take morning live, uh, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock Thursday morning, we'll already be able to start predicting how the parties are going to be doing nationally. Correct. That's as exciting. I mean, this is getting real now. It's really getting real. Do the parties come and dispute this with you? Um, no, they do come uh, sometimes to hear what we say. Yeah. Um, I remember there's one party that came and said, uh, we should have just come to you right in the beginning. We would have saved ourselves heartache. <laughs> um, but yeah, they do come and check uh, what are the numbers saying uh, for their parties and so on and so forth. Excellent. And we also do speak to uh, the media um, across the board. Well, I know we're going to be seeing a lot of you guys, so we look forward to it. Predictions already from the CSIR. They have a system in place where, as you heard, from 5% of the total votes counted, they can already start predicting the end result as to how the political parties are going to do in these 2019 elections. Dr. Ndomiso Tringo, he's uh, uh, with the CSIR, as well as Professor Pravesh Deba, uh, both of them uh, working with stats and uh, management with regard to space planning and systems at the CSIR. All right, let's get back to the Johannesburg studio. A little bit late for the news, but nonetheless, let's find out what's topping our bulletins.